Welcome back to Gaffer's Salon. Happy holidays. Um, I was able to go to uh, the Cinematography Salon party uh, in Brooklyn uh, last night. David just did an amazing job. There was just a ton of people there. It was, it was a lot of fun. Somehow I managed to win one of the raffle prizes. I'm a little unclear what I won. I think it was a Fuji camera of some kind. So I guess I'll be surprised in the new year when it shows up. Uh, on the doorstep, but thanks to David for inviting all of us folks from Gaffer Salon. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, today's going to be a quick first look at the new Aperture Pro Max Spotlight Attachment, aka Ellipsoidal. This is just going to be a quick first look. We're not going to talk about photometrics. We're just going to talk about it in general and some thoughts I have about it and uh, some things that I'm thinking I'd like to test. And there's been a a lot of discussion and Aperture has been, you know, posting some uh, photometrics. Um, and I generally find most of these manufacturers, uh, they're, I find their photometrics are usually pretty spot on, if not even conservative. Um, so there's a lot of data already about, well, how well does this with the 36 lens perform on the 1200D or on the 600C, et cetera. Um, so, uh, when this first arrived on my doorstep, or I should say in my driveway, it was packed in a wooden crate. And I, I, I walked up the driveway and I'm like, oh my God, this thing is enormous. Holy hell. Uh, but let's dig into that a little bit. Uh, so this is the case. It's substantial. I think it's one of the better cases I've, I've seen Aperture make. It's a hard case. It has wheels. It has handles. It is really well made. Uh, it's got this die cut. I don't know what you call this stuff. Foam. I don't know. Hard foam, whatever it is. But it's quite lovely. Um, and if I just tilt it down so you could see it, uh, it is laid out quite beautifully. Uh, I'm not sure what some of the extra slots are for. I uh, haven't seen the full list of accessories yet. I know uh, it does not come with an iris. That's uh, additional. Um, and you can see it compared to the 600C case, it's a substantial case, right? It's, it's, it's big. Uh, you know, you, you want to have four of these on the truck one day. That's a big, a big thing. So let, let's dig into that a little bit. And I think we start by just looking at our old school ETC Source 4 uh, Lico with a 50 degree EDLT. Um, that's the size of it. Um, and I'll be honest with you, this is one of the few things I still carry on my truck, a few tungsten things. Um, I keep six of these in a hamper on the truck. Uh, they don't work every job, but they pretty much are there. I like to have them in my back pocket. Uh, they're so dirt cheap, uh, you know, to, to production. I mean, these rent for what, 25 bucks, 30 bucks a day here in New York. Um, I have a bunch of dimmers. I have a huge gobo kit, scrim kit. Um, they're, they're just still a workhorse for me. And one of the reasons too, I, I often use these, uh, are the huge variety of lenses I have available to me, right? I have everything from five degree to 90 degrees. So I've got five, 10, 14, 26, 36, 50, 70, and 90. And I own four each plus eight in the popular sizes. Uh, I've got six of these on the truck. Um, now look, we know, you got to jump through some hoops if you want to get these into DMX and get them up on blackout or whatever. Um, I, you know, oftentimes uh, on my smaller jobs, I'm just running them off dimmers. Um, I've been trying to maybe integrate them. But of course, I'm hoping to move into something of this size that's full color. CRMX has all the things we've come to expect. Um, but one area that I find tungsten in general uh, but specifically Lico's uh, hero is when you really need to play in low Calvins. Um, I find, and this is not an aperture thing, this is every LED manufacturer. Once you get below, say, 26 to 2400 Calvin on LEDs, when you get down to the low 2000s, the spectrum is not great. It's maybe okay, but it's nowhere comparable to what tungsten does dim down to low Calvins. Um, so I still find that heroes for me in those situations. Um, but right now I'm principally just talking about size. So if we pull out our Spotlight Max and we set them down together outside of the case, that is not substantially different, is it? I, I think it's very close. It's clearly beefier. It's a little you know, larger diameter. Um, 
and it's got to be three or four times the weight, right? I mean, this, there is a ton of glass, both in this side and down in the lens. There is a small amount of glass, relatively speaking, in the original uh, Lego. Um, now, the original, we had our TVMP, uh, or a pipe clamp, but in this case, TVMP, you could go baby, you could go junior. But this is beefy enough and heavy enough that it is junior pin only. Um, with some very positive locking disc brakes. Uh, I tried to push this earlier when it was locked down. It is a substantial lockdown. But, you know, looking at size of this, it's not crazy different. But in fairness, of course, the bulb is already in here. This is a complete lighting fixture. This has no light on it yet. So that's going to factor into the size. So depending on what we put on this, uh, which is one of the reasons I, I like the 600 aperture, the 600C, is it, all things considered, it's a relatively compact head, right? Um, say, versus my Orion 675s, which is a much bigger, much heavier, much more substantial head. Um, and not diving into the differences between RGB ACL and RGBW, just talking about relative size, weight, etc. cetera. Um, it's nice to have something that might be kind of compact, so you have at least something reminiscent of being and living in that same world. We're going to be heavier. There's just no way around it. To be optically efficient, we need bigger, heavier glass. So it's, uh, I guess, the cross we have to bear as we move into LED uh, projection units. Um, so most manufacturers, you know, uh, have been doing just two lenses. Uh, you know, Nanlites, uh, I own a bunch of their Nan uh, 60Cs. The projection only has 19 and 36. When you move up to the Nanlite Bowens mount, and that would, I, I, would be a direct competitor to this unit, the Bowens mount Nanlite, only 19 or 36. Um, now, I've argued with them they need 50 degree minimum three lenses, right? I, I would say, really, we need a minimum of four lenses, 10 degree uh, as well. But... Um, but Aperture has given us a choice of three lenses. Now, I asked for a 50 because so few people were making 50s, and I wanted to see how efficient that 50 was going to be on this, say, as a direct head-to-head. -head. How are these going to compare? Let's say we put the 600-watt full spectrum on here versus a native 750-watt tungsten bulb. How close am I going to get? Um, no, I'm not expecting it's going to be as bright, but I'm wondering how close it's going to get, so we'll see. Um, and we'll take a look at uh, you know, general performance. I think what we're seeing in general, and from what I'm hearing about this um, from friends, is you know, my friend Jenner Jarnigan uh, used this on her uh, feature she just shot a couple months ago. She had a pre-release version of the Spotlight, and they were just super impressed with the output, and especially the beam quality, uh, the evenness, the lack of any color fringing, color aberration, et cetera. Um, you know, doing ceiling bounces, doing, you know, using Lecos in all the way we use them, not just with gobos and patterns, but, um, you know, to get a little spot bounce back or to bounce into a card or a CRLS or whatever. So it's going to be interesting to test this uh, relative to output. Uh, it's, you know, it's tricky for manufacturers. They're, you know, cobs are not standardized. It's got to be a nightmare for manufacturers, not only trying to build something that might possibly be cross-compatible to another manufacturer's product, but they've got to worry about their own line. And even Aperture within their own line have different cob designs. Not only size of cob, but the spottiness, the, the shape of the cob. There's just all differences. And so you're going to get a variety of optical efficiency. Some are going to be more efficient. I mean, this ultimately can work on the, the new ElectroStorm, the 1200D, uh, the 600C, uh, I believe also on the other uh, 600s. And, you know, some are going to perform, I think, better than others just because of the differences in cob design, both in terms of size, spread, et cetera. So it is, it is a tricky business that manufacturers have. Uh, they got to juggle a lot of things to get things as optically aligned and perfect as possible. So it's our job as ultimate end users to see how well this stacks up against the other brands right, in terms of putting other heads. Will it work with the Forza 500 Mark II with the green magenta? Will it work with an OG Forza 500, just the daylight head, which is really fantastic because it's so lightweight and small. Maybe that would be interesting. I've already heard reports that it works really well with the Orion 300, for example, 
but of course the 300 is quite long so you're going to end up with quite a big megilla um, which is why I like the 600C because it is compact it's also twice the output of the Orion 300 so it's going to be interesting to test uh, I'm curious to know um, you know about the blade cuts um, I'm curious you know light leaks ETC has done a fantastic job with really limited limiting any light leakage um, out of all of the blade uh, pockets. Um, the elephant in the room. The elephant in the room is what I've talked about endlessly is my frustration with the lack of a rotating barrel on all these new LED fixtures that are coming out. So I would be admiss to not address it here. Um, and I've said this privately and publicly uh, to Aperture that I thought it was essential and a deal breaker, uh, but we did not get it in this. Um, in fairness, we didn't get it in a lot of other ones either. I don't know why. Uh, I was told um, that there were some problems. It would have added a substantial amount of weight uh, to make the barrel rotate. I, I'm not an engineer. I don't know. Um, to me, it still remains an essential feature. Um, I think a year ago I might have listed it as an absolute deal breaker. That's how serious I think needing a rotating barrel is. Um, but I'm living in a world where every single one of these manufacturers has not given us a rotating barrel. So I'm going to keep complaining and I'm going to keep asking for it. And uh, I'll tell you, if someone does it, I'm going to that barrel. Just a quick aside, so talking about rotating barrels, I want to be clear, there are some fixtures that do have rotating barrels. Uh, for example, the Filex G3. But that is a dedicated ellipsoidal. It does have a rotating barrel. It's a fantastic unit. Another would be uh, the Dado Neo. Um, but that has a bit of an Achilles heel in that the Dado Neo, you could slide essentially into where you would slide the barn doors, one of Dado's um, projectors, right? One of his projection lenses. Uh, the problem with those were they were designed essentially for older point source bulbs and their glass is relatively small. So they become not very optically efficient when they're added to the Dado Neo. And if you put, for example, a Dado Neo up against even say a Nanolite 60C, the 60C with the projection with similar beam angles is going to be well over a stop and a half brighter. So they're just not terribly efficient, but they do fully rotate. And then you have adapters that rotate. For example, the Nanlux uh, Evoke adapter. So it has a proprietary Nanlux mount. You add the Leco barrel to it, and then you can adapt any ETC lens. That said, I've purchased six Nanlite 60Cs, none of which have rotating barrels. I purchased two Nanlite projection Bowens mount. That doesn't have rotating barrels. I now have this, no rotating barrel. So we'll see. Um, I think, in fairness to Aperture, they have done some interesting things with this Promax um, that may slightly mitigate some of that concern, uh, although, although definitely not fully eliminate it. So one of the smart things they did was they made the gobo be able to rotate. So you have a gobo holder insert, like your regular gobo holder, uh, except this one you can rotate the gobo. So here we have a window pattern. Um, so this is gonna be terrific when you're projecting your window pattern and you wanna get it lined up. Oh, it's not quite parallel. You can just boom, not an issue, right? And it comes with, uh, these are larger what are these? A size, A size gobos. Thankfully, they did not give us the Aperture logo as one of the three gobos. Uh, they smartly gave us some very useful gobos, a typical sort of window uh, pattern and uh, a couple of uh, really nice Kukaloris type breakups. And there's, you know, you can get optional additional gobos. Um, and they, it comes with a insert. Uh, if you're like me, I don't own any of these larger gobos. I've got probably 300 gobos in the B size. Uh, so there's an insert that you can use to use the smaller gobo in here. Uh, so that's really nice. So I think this helps a little bit with the lack of a rotating barrel. And I was playing with the blades a little bit. Uh, they seem very easy to move, very smooth operation. Um, so the issue, of course, is going to be when you get uh, your angle and you set your blades where you want it, if you suddenly have to tilt or shift, you're going to have to 
by hand manually move those blades. The gobo you can rotate, but the blades you're going to have to move. Um, so I'm hoping the blades seem pretty substantial. Some of the problems I've had on the other projection is since it, the barrel doesn't rotate, when you try to maneuver the blades around, sometimes the blades are too short and you end up with a gap uh, on one end and you can't get uh, the angle of the blades that you want. Um, so we'll see, you know, in real, real world practice, how much I feel that the lack of the rotating barrel is really boning me, right? Um, so that out of the way, the other really smart thing they did uh, is they made a insert for this. So if you remove the aperture proprietary lens, uh, you can put an insert in which will allow you to use any ETC lens. Well, not any, but any of the EDTL, any of the original lenses um, will fit into the sleeve, uh, which is fantastic for owner ops like me or rental houses that own just a bazillion lenses. Uh, you know, we've got five degree, 10 degree, 70, 90, everything in between. Um, I can now cross purpose those into my uh, Pro Max uh, projection. Um, and that's fantastic. Now look, they're not gonna be as optically efficient. They don't have as big and bulky glass as we know that's needed to be optically efficient, but it'll still give me the luxury of being able to repurpose, repurpose my older lenses. Um, and I'm expecting they'll, they'll do really good. They won't have quite the output of, say, a newer lens designed for this unit, but it really will expand the functionality of having um, the limitation of just three lenses right now. Um, I'll be back once I get the sleeve. I think Mitch Gross is going to lend me one uh, right after the holidays so I can get the sleeve on here and we can test that. Um, and that's it. So I hope you all have a great holiday. Um, I'll probably be back in the new year with uh, some more serious uh, testing with this Promax Spotlight uh, attachment.